you to pull up a chair and to make yourself comfortable wherever you may be. My heart is that we will be able to share something that is practical, prophetic, and empowering to your life. And without a doubt, I believe that, uh, that uh, on the journey we're on, that there's always something we can receive that can make a difference where we are at. Today, I want to talk about the thought uh, entitled Voices. Voices. This is really simple in nature, but yet is probably a principle that we all have to learn, and that's the ability to hear and to hear voices and to hear the correct voices, making decisions and and uh, doing the duty of leadership and life in the marketplace, the church, wherever you may find yourself is always about making decisions, but listening to the different voices that are coming at you. Some are loud, some are not so loud. Some talk more than they listen. And, uh, you know, so many times in our own lives, we have to ask the question, are we taking time to listen? Because when we're talking, it's usually out of what we already know. But when we're listening, we're learning. We're taking in new information. During this season, I've gone back to school and doing some more training. And, some, you know, during this time, it's just been a refreshing to learn some new things and some new insights. It always reminds me of how little I do know, and yet the importance of gaining new knowledge in order to stay relevant and to stay on the cutting edge, so to speak, of making a difference and impact. Well, with that said, I want to talk about this thing of voices today. Uh, I'll tell a little bit of a funny story, first of all. Uh, my wife and I had, were downsizing and sold our home about four or five years ago and we're having a condo built. And uh, during that time, we moved in with our daughter's family and and um, her and her husband were gracious. I'm not sure if they were happy, but they were gracious to let Kathy and I stay. And I'll never forget this particular Saturday morning. Uh, Caitlin, our oldest granddaughter at that time, probably 12 or 13, and um, and our, our second oldest, Christian, uh, he was probably about seven or eight. And anyway, they got into an argument, which is typical for brothers and sisters, but it was a different kind of argument because it was uh, basically who was going to control a Lexus. Uh, it was electronic device. Alexa was uh, basically an uh, electronic device that sat on their their uh, fireplace and it'd say, Alexa, turn on the TV. And of course, TV would come on and they had it hooked up to their music. On this particular morning, Caitlin says, Alexa, turn on elevation music and started playing music. And about that time, Christian screamed out, Alexa, stop. And he begins to say, you know, Alexa, turn Hillsong music on. And it starts to play. And then Caitlin chimes in, uh, Alexa, stop and says, play such and such song. And they started going back and forth. And it was Alexa, stop. Alexa, say this or sing this or play this. And a few moments later, Alexa screams out, which was very odd that I'd never heard. And basically he said, uh, Val Valumis, Valumis. And basically talked about, uh, and I looked up what the word meant, it meant uh, many voices, much noise. And uh, I was thinking, I, w I wonder just how many times, uh, you know, uh, Alexa's crying out in us saying too many voices. <laughs> you know, there's just too much noise going on. And uh, when I begin to think about this, um, I, I think about all the different times, uh, types of voices that are coming at us. Um, you know, the, the scripture talks about early on when God had relationship with man and he called and talked to Adam and Eve. But that particular day when uh, God comes in the garden and he says, you know, you know, where are you? And of course, they're hiding. And and uh, what does Adam say? He said, I heard your voice in the garden. He said, but I was afraid because I was naked. All of a sudden, his hearing became skewed. He, he felt a different way. His ability to hear God was skewed because of, of fear and because of what had happened, because of uh, making agreement with the voice of his wife Eve and Eve making agreement with the voice of the serpent that she was beguiled by. And as a result, uh, the downfall of man came. And all of a sudden, um, the things we heard, how we heard, changed in so many different ways. And uh, what I realized today is there's a lot of voices that are speaking. You know, I want to talk about five voices, first of all, that are always probably speaking, especially in leadership and in life. The first voice is our own voice. It's our inner voice that is talking. And 
meditating and the self-talk. Uh, hopefully you're, you're your best cheerleader. I love what the psalmist David said when they were, some of his men were tempted to stone him and he was going through a really bad day at Zitlag when he had lost everything. And I love what he said. He encouraged himself in the Lord. I wonder, is our self-talk encouraging the voice that we have in our own head that we're listening to? Uh, you know, and the, the meditating, the, the mindsets of, of what we rehearse uh, is probably one of the areas that times speak so loudly because as we think is what we speak. And, and usually that's becomes some reality in our life. Another voice is the voice of people, the people you're allowing into your life. Sometimes it comes with uh, encouragement and you're grateful when it comes, but sometimes it comes with complaining and or it comes with negativism or it comes with uh, many a times uh, opinions that are coming at you from every direction of people speaking. And sometimes um, we can get down to simply by what we're hearing people speak and and then there's the voice of what I call the voice of culture. It is the media mountain. It is, uh, you know, the news, uh, people who, you know, I, I kind of get fed up sometimes when you turn on, you know, one of the news networks and there's three people sitting there. They're really not giving you the news. They're just talking about their opinions and giving their commentary in which many a times is, is totally erratic and off of the wall. And uh, sometimes all of that, noise and voices, you know, and yet I, I tell you, without a doubt, there is a fight for the culture of America. And yet the battle uh, of the earth is a battle for culture. And yet culture is the manifestation of the thinking of people. So voices are being spoken that influences and whoever controls the minds of people usually creates the culture. So what's happening is unless we have a relevant voice that is being spoken, we're being moved rather and influenced by culture. And uh, today there are voices saying more than ever before that certain things are right that were once wrong. And, and yet, especially when it's opposite to, to the scripture and we're trying to hear these voices, but realizing it does not match what is truth. And, you know, where does truth come from? And that comes from the biblical values we have which I call that biblical intellect. We need to have that intellect biblically to say, no, that's not correct. Not only that, but then another voice is Satan's voice, the enemy's voice. Somebody says, oh, do you really believe um, that there is a demonic Satan in the, in the world? Absolutely. I, I do believe we have an en en enemy and an adversary. And every time he speaks, the Bible said that he speaks a lie because he's speaking usually contrary to, to what God desires and he wants. He's usually speaking fear or he's speaking something that is, uh, you know, speaking into you an inadequacy or or something to make you feel you can't, you're not. And uh, so many times, if we're not careful, we'll give in to that voice. I mean, that voice came against Jesus himself when he was being tempted after 40 days of uh, fasting and prayer. The enemy came and he spoke. He said, turn this bread you know, uh, you know, turn these rocks into bread, you know, so you may eat. And of course, Jesus begins to go into a dialogue with, with, the, with the enemy that had come against him. We also at times have to come against that voice, say, no, I'm not going to give in to that voice because sometimes that voice can become loud. If we're not careful, we will give in to some of the negatives that the enemy will give. You know, the Bible says that the serpent was more cunning than any other beast in the field. And the Bible said, and it said that he said to the woman, and uh, that's where the downfall started, is listening to the wrong voice. So we have the voice of culture. We have the voice of people. We have our own voice that is speaking. But then the most important voice is the voice of God. You know, Moses was out doing the shepherding that he did on the mountain on that day when he saw the bush was consumed, but he heard a voice come out of the voice, come out of the out of the bush, and he turned aside. And he and he and basically he replied, "Here I am, you know, who are you?" And it, and it, and his encounter with God. Um, I, let me just stop and say that whatever venue we find ourselves, whether it is in a church or a marketplace 
or even in a situation as a parent leading our kids and our families, it is imperative today that we are hearing from God and we're hearing the voice of God. Now, let me say, I, I know we hear the voice of God through Scripture and it's truth and it's His, it, it is His uh, written word to us and it's His voice speaking to us from Scripture. And sometimes it becomes rhema in the moment. It's just, we know God is speaking through that. And that's a wonderful thing. That's why we need to give ourselves daily to Scripture and, and being in the Scripture. But but there's those moments when we need to hear the voice uh, of of what God is saying in our life. There's one particular story in Scripture, and I have a litany of Scriptures I could go through where different ones, such as Samuel, has an encounter of hearing God, and God speaks to him when the priesthood of Eli quit listening to God. And, you know, but one particular Scripture that probably comes out at me for leadership is maybe we've overused it some, but it's the story of Elijah. Um, after Elijah has done many exploits for God, calls fire down on Mount Carmel, ultimately encounters, slays 450 prophets of Baal, pours out of himself. Let me, let me just say that when we get poured out, we have to pour back in because if we're not, uh, we can become very depleted. Leadership is an area at times where you're pouring out and at the same time you're not pouring in. It may be another lesson for another day, but we have gauges in our life and sometimes we're not gauging what's getting poured out of our lives. But in this particular case, uh, after this great success and all that Elijah pours out, uh, a messenger comes to him by way of, of uh, Queen Jezebel. Ahab were the leaders of that day. And um, basically, Jezebel says, I'm going to basically kill you by this time tomorrow. And after all that Elijah has poured out, he runs and ends up finding himself under a tree, a broom tree, uh, and he's just basically cooked. He's tired. He wants to die. He's contemplating suicide. It'd be better if I didn't, you know, uh, you know, he, he just, he's, he's hit the bottom. Um, if we're all transparent and honest, there's been moments in leadership or in life where we've just totally poured ourselves out and then the enemy comes and when our fatigue comes and all these hum human things come as well as just the oppression of doing things that we believe are God things and sometimes depression even sets in. I know I had had a season where I went through after some physical issues, went through some depression, some dark moments where I was just, I, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to be around people. And uh, here Elijah finds himself here and he loses the ability to hear. He hears what Je Jezebel says. He runs for his life. He ends up in a cave um, and basically away from everything. Nobody's there. And we find this in 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13, I want to read the scripture. It said, and, and then he said, who said? God said. He said he goes out and uh, Elijah goes out and stands on the mountain before the Lord. And I want you to notice some things. Behold, it says, the Lord passed by and a great and a strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But I want you to notice what it says. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. But after the fire, a small, still voice. I've always, always been intrigued with this scripture in that there's a lot of stuff going on. Fire, wind, earthquake. I mean, this must have been quite the scene of all of this going on. And sometimes... That represents, uh, it represents all the chaos that we're in in the world sometimes. All the vo noise and all the voices and everything getting moved. And if we're not careful, we'll get caught up in all that. And God's not in any of it. Here he says, God is not in any of it. But then the small, still voice. It wasn't in all the noise. It wasn't in the loudness. Even though sometimes we equate spirituality to loudness. 
uh, especially if you're charismatic, you have a tendency to think, you know, and it's not a matter, I, I'm charismatic, so I, I get excited. But I think sometimes we have to realize that sometimes that noise and dancing and celebrating, even though I love it, is not always what we need at that moment. We need to hear the voice of God. I would say if you're a young leader, especially that the greatest thing that you can acquire as a young leader is the ability to hear the voice of God, because it was in the moment that he heard the voice of God. I was amazed the very first thing that God said to Elijah there. He said to Elijah, what are you doing here, Elijah? What was he saying to him? He was saying, Elijah, you, you, you've gotten somewhere. You haven't gotten there because I told you to go here. You're not where you're supposed to be. I wonder how many times there's been voices and influences that we have been influenced by, or even the negatives that we have been influenced by, the voices that have caused us to go to a place we weren't ordained to go. I really believe I'm speaking to somebody who may be in that place today, and it's not too late to stop and say, okay, God, let me hear the voice. I got to get back. Because it was then that then Elijah did return to go back to finish his time and to, and to acquire Elisha and, and to pass a mantle on so the ministry would continue. But I think it's very important for us to realize that God does speak. The Bible says that his sheep follow him and that they know his voice. I believe God's people know his voice. I believe encounter is within the voice of God. It was Paul or it was Saul at the time when the voice came from heaven and he fell off of his animal or his donkey and basically a voice came and he heard and of course he was, Lord, Lord, who are you? And uh, of course the Lord begins to speak to him and out of that encounter came transformation in Saul's life that he would become Paul the apostle. I, I believe that sometimes the change in leadership and in taking vision and taking where we are to the next level is hearing the ability to hear the voice of what God is saying. I love what God told John the Revelator when he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You know, it grieves me today when I realize that there are people who are saying, God told me, and they share what God told them, but they never heard God say that. We need to be very careful if we start saying God said something that we really heard what God said. As I, I try to bring this to a close because this is just the beginning, I, I'm probably going to go on with this a little bit and talk about listening to the voices of other leaders who can impact us and getting into that some. But as I try to close this time out, um, I would say what we listen to gets our attention, which becomes a part of our critical thinking which becomes a part of our beliefs and our behaviors. Again, what we listen to gets our attention and what gets our attention usually becomes a part of our critical thinking, which can be good or bad, and becomes a part of our beliefs and behavior. So as a man thinks, so is he. So what we're hearing, what are you allowing? I'm going to say this. We have got to have boundaries around our ears to make sure we're allowing the right people to speak into our life. You can't just let everybody speak into your life because not everybody has not only God's voice, but not everybody has your best interests at heart. So who are you allowing to speak into your life? Not only that, but whatever voice you think about becomes a part of your vocabulary and your vocabulary becomes your prophecy for the future. Let me say that again. Whatever voice you think about becomes a part of your vocabulary and that your vocabulary becomes your prophecy for your future. So guess what? You start living in what you're speaking because that's what you're hearing. Jesus talked about a generation whose eyes were closed and their ears were waxed shut. And uh, I, I, I don't know about you, but my concern so many times is we have lost the heart the art of hearing, hearing the voice of God. I'm asking God today as I close this to help you. 
to help you get all the noise out of your life right now, to get in a quiet place, to know who God is and to know that he is able to give you a fresh word for where you're at today. That is my prayer today. I thank you for spending time with me today. I pray this has been a blessing to you, and I pray that the kingdom of God will be enlarged in you and around you. God bless, and have a great day.